Hi, welcome to another Photoshop for Video tip. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and today we're going to take a look at how we can use Photoshop CS3 Extended to color correct our video clips. Color correct video? That's right. Photoshop CS3 can open up video files and opens up new opportunities for color correction that aren't available in the traditional nonlinear editing environment. Let's see how. What we're going to do here is something quite complex. We're going to take a red truck and make it green without affecting other parts of the image. Now, you might be thinking, sure, that's easy. You just select the red and modify it. But that doesn't really work if you had to go frame by frame through the image and have all the reflections and everything else stay right. But fortunately, Photoshop offers some great tools with adjustment layers that we can use. Now, if you have not done this before, you can open up a video clip into Photoshop by simply grabbing it over an Adobe Bridge and dragging it on top of the Photoshop icon. When you do that, you will get a new Photoshop composition that automatically has the timeline set to the proper duration for the clip. Now, I'm using a clip here from Artbeats footage, and they provide lots of different types of stock footage, but you can use any clip of your own. And what we're going to do here is change color modes. Now, normally, most people work in RGB mode, where you have separate information for the red, green, and blue channels. For example, here, this is the red channel, and where the image is very light or closer to white means there's a high presence of red, such as in the truck. If we look at the green channel, you'll see that there's very little green, if any, in the truck itself. Same goes for blue. However, the sky is quite blue, and that's why it's represented by this white here. So if you learn to think in channels, you can start to see color in a whole new light. What we're going to do is change the color mode of our document by going to Image Mode, and we'll switch to LAB Color Mode. Now, this extremely advanced color mode is very useful for doing secondary color correction, where you want to isolate an individual color and modify it. In fact, this mode is very similar to video. If we look at it, you'll see that we have a lightness channel, and the lightness channel contains all of the detail. And then we have two channels of information for the colors. Here's the A channel, and if we combine A with lightness, you'll see the A channel is where most of the green and the red details are stored. And over in the blue channel, you'll see other parts of green as well as yellow. In fact, the B channel is much more where blue and yellow can be found. So, A is for red and greens, and B is more for blues and yellows. And if we perform an adjustment to this image, we can modify that. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is switch back to the Layers palette, and we are going to add an adjustment layer for curves. And you'll see here that normally it's going to affect the lightness channel. But I want to go after just the reds in this image. So if I switch to the A channel, I can modify just the reds inside of the image. And essentially what's happening if you look at this is we have two ramps. And it's saying input down here and output up here. So, what's currently black on an input value is being output as black in that channel. And what is white is being output as white. What I'm essentially going to do is modify just this color here. So, an easy way to do that is to go after just this back part of the curve. So, we'll click and add some control points so the front parts don't move. And as I pull this down, you'll see that the reds start to get affected. There we've pushed the reds more into an orange. If I keep going, it will continue to change. And eventually, if you go far enough, you notice we're starting to move into some greens. So as I drag that through, that works pretty well. I could start to pull these other control points to refine it. There we go. And if I play with that, you'll see that we can actually control the intensity of the green as well. So moving these points around to very intense, 
or back it off just a little bit so it still looks natural. Let's quickly toggle the preview box here, before and after. And I can click OK. Now, you might be thinking that that only did one frame, but in fact, because this is an adjustment layer, it affects all frames of the video. And even though the image moves, you see that the color is based upon the channel values. It's not a pixel-based selection. So if we press play here, you'll see that in fact, there's no boiling or noise around the color. At no point does it break up or start to show little bits of red. In fact, it's very, very clean, and this is an excellent way to do secondary color correction. Let's go ahead and finish this out, and I am going to add another adjustment layer, this time using a photo filter. We can warm the shot up with the photo filter if we'd like to change the temperature, but what I'd like to do is actually cool it down and make it look a little bit more like early evening. That feels pretty good to me. Toggle the preview off and on. And what we're getting there is a nice blue in the sky and a little bit of blue in the reflections, which helps really change the time of day. It's a good idea to leave the preserve luminosity switch checked because this will help maintain a consistent brightness in the image. And I can click OK. At this point, the clip is ready, but you're going to have to do just a little bit of processing to get it out. The LAB mode really only works inside of Adobe Photoshop. Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro are not designed to work with LAB color, but we can export this movie from Photoshop and it will come in just fine as a video clip that we can use with our system. Simply choose File, Export, Render Video. And if you pick a destination, you can give it a name, choose your settings, We'll go ahead and make this a standard NTSC D1 clip, 720 by 46, and I could choose a codec. If I want to preserve high quality, I might decide to leave it at animation, or I could pick any other format that matches what I'm editing with. We'll go ahead and leave the frame rate at 2997, and we'll take this to millions of colors so it's more accurate and set it to best quality. I click OK, everything's set. I got to double check the frame rate and the codec and the color. Click OK, and then hit render, and it will create the video file. If you'd like to know more about using LAB color mode, be sure to check out Photoshop LAB Color, The Canyon Conundrum by Dan Morgolis. It's a great book that goes quite deep in this interesting and useful color space. Photoshop exports the video to disk and renders all of the frames. And at this point, it's a standard video file that you can use in any video or even web application if that's how you'd like to distribute. By harnessing the power of LAB color, you could do some very interesting secondary style color corrections. Photoshop CS3 Extended offers the ability to open your video clips and harness these powerful features. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Rich Harrington, and if you'd like to learn more about using Photoshop with video, I invite you to check out my resource site, photoshopforvideo.com, as well as books and DVDs with the same name.